Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the smallest of Jayco's luxury series fifth wheels, the 310 RLTS. Everybody and their brother makes a layout like this. Eagle, Cougar, Montana, eh, Pinnacle makes something like it. They, they all have some standout qualities. It, pound for pound, the North Point here is tough to beat. We have uh, like all that nice big expansive living space in all of the windows in the world on the door side of the RV, which is where I, I know I personally prefer them. Has a nice big bedroom master suite with a king bed up there and newly deepened bed slide, which is funny, it almost makes the bed look small. It's just the bedroom got bigger even though the RV didn't get longer. Uh, for a tow vehicle, you're probably going to be looking like uh, uh, many single rear wheel uh, one tons will handle something like this. It is potentially possible a really heavy duty three quarter. Obviously, a dually would take care of it all day. And if you're not familiar with exactly what your vehicle can handle, give our team here at Halitz uh, a call. We'll double check the towing guides to make sure it's going to be safe pairing for you. This has a laundry list of gorgeous qualities uh, like the, uh, the, the carpetless slide system, the dual whisper air, six point hydraulic auto leveling, and a lot of really cool exclusive things like that that drinking water system that is so cool it just it saves you the need of lugging around a whole bunch of like bottles of water which is it's not that it's impossible it's, just, it's always annoying trying to deal with them you know you're dealing with a lot of storage space loss you don't have to to muck with that here it's got a new towing hitch on the back it's got voice activation for the air and the lights <laughs> they just they just keep moving forward oh and not only that but uh, you know the uh, the the connectivity aspects of this, like if you're gonna do some work camping, it has not the prep for like an LTE Wi-Fi access point. It actually has one installed from the factory, which means it's also covered under the factory warranty. That's the benefit of a North Point. They do more things from the factory so that you're covered under that best in class two plus three year warranty for full time RVing that nobody seems to match. And I actually have people ask me all the time, hey Josh, if you and your wife, you were going to go full time in today, what would you look at? Inevitably, it's always like someone's version of this floor plan. Just because pound for pound, I think it's like one of the best crafted things out there. Everything that you get out of it, it's, it's just, it's nuts all of the benefit that you get out of this. Good storage, good living space, reasonable length for towing, but still all the high class features. This thing's amazing. Like right up top here, we've got uh, a vaulted ceiling with double whisper ducted 15,000 BTU air conditioners on this. And it is prepped and ready for a third air, although that's not something very commonly documented on a North Point. Uh, up here, you had that nice big uh, uh, vent fan, you know? Well, you can pull that out and you can put a third air in there. Very similar to, you know, what I talk about all the time on a Montana. It's just a little more obvious on a Montana. But that's actually kind of a Jayco doing Jayco thing. They tend to be very good about hiding some of the good features that they offer um, because they want the RV to look clean if you're not going to add those. Like they don't want to see, or they don't want you to see where you can add prep for this or that or whatever thing. They want it to look complete and fully finished. And sometimes it means you have to pop a panel off to get to something. It's kind of their best and their worst quality, if you think about it. We're looking at the farmhouse to gore today, but if this ain't your thing, good news. They offer a, a brown on brown uh, package as well. Solid surface countertops gleaming in here, looking fantastic. We have a completely carpetless floor system in this, which is uh, something they, they brought into the 21 season that I love. And at this point, even a stick and tin J flight by Jayco is carpetless. They build very few things now with carpeted slides. They're really getting ahead of that curve right there. Uh, notice how every window on this thing opens for airflow. And have you noticed there's just, uh, there's a ton of windows in it. Speaking of which, you have like a, a bonus window over here behind where I suppose the entertainment would be. Um, we've got ourselves, when we're sitting here, we're directly across from the Tootsie Toaster. That new JBL sound system doing just a fantastic job in here. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, if you're an audiophile, an RV's factory stereo is never going to be the, the most amazing thing to you. But it's also not too terribly bad on this one. You see how the TV's in that televator? And that is an extra wide sleeper sofa. Um, it, this is still an eight foot wide RV. It's not wide body but they use like a wide body sofa in it, which means maybe the side stands are uh, a little thinner, 
But there's, uh, you can see some outlets back there. It still has all the, the necessary things I think you're going to look for. It just gives you a bigger sort of lounge space. Now this floor plan, at a glance, if you're familiar with Jayco's lineup, their mid bunk, the 377 North Point, it appears to be the exact same living room, but you notice they're using a different theater seat. This one is forced theater. It's not love seat theater convertible, although it is still power recline heat and massage. So you might be going, what gives? It's almost imperceptible. And when we get back to the kitchen, I'll show you where it's different. But the this living room is almost a foot shorter than the living room in their beautiful mid bunk model. What doesn't change though, all of the windows over here that we saw on the door side of the RV. And when the RV, uh, when, when I had the height of bed out, you got to see uh, that thing down there in uh, like, uh, it, with the blackout shades in privacy mode, I guess you could call it. Over here, you see where you've got the guest chairs you can pull out when you want. For the most part though, this is pretty much just a, a couple's rig. I don't know how often you're gonna need those. You can store them just under the bed. You can put them in the basement. You can leave them at home. You can throw them on the burn pile after you buy the RV. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're just on the sofa back here, this is kind of what it would look like. You've got a really cool little conversation corner, but I'm sitting in the middle of this three adult size sofa. If I scoot myself over here a little bit, uh, sorry about the fast camera movement right there, by the way. It's just kind of tough to move myself and whip that around. The TV's on a televator, so the TV doesn't pivot. But if I'm just sitting over here lounging, if I'm laying down watching a movie in the middle of the day, I still maintain that you got a pretty decent view of this thing right here. It's not too bad when it comes to that. Uh, I'll tell you what else is not too bad. The kitchen space here. Now, before we get to the kitchen, I do want to acknowledge... Maybe you dislike the level change right there where the entertainment and the kitchen exchange with one another. What do you think about that? I, I kind of visibly like the clarity and the definition because it is just a, a, a one room, like open body camper. I kind of like how there's a little bit of a line that says, hey, that one stops and this one starts now. But what do you think about that? We're gonna start right over here by the coffee bar, by the entry door that is sized just right, by the way, if you want to add a little Keurig machine. Now, in the upper right-hand corner of the screen right now, you might notice two little black dots. If you're not familiar with those, hang out just a little bit. There's a third one outside that I'll show you and explain exactly what those are. Now, it's been a little while since I opened that pantry door. I was getting this already. One of the cool things, there's actually a motion-activated light in that pantry, and sometimes it's just a little stuff. Just that little string so that the door doesn't bang against the refrigerator. That's nice. I like that. Now, what we're looking at here is the optional gas electric two-way refrigerator freezer with auto changeover uh, system. Uh, the standard on this is a slightly larger uh, residential refrigerator with ice maker and water dispenser and, of course, inverter to keep it running while you're traveling. Each refrigerator has a little bit different benefits. Uh, in the past, we had been very slanted against the residential refrigerators in these, but Jayco's got some new suppliers now that seem to be doing a, uh, a better job, so you'll probably start to see some of those merge back into our lineup here at Halitz. That is a convection microwave, in case you're curious. Uh, sometimes, visibly, it can be a little bit uh, difficult to uh, discern. Large overhead cabinet space right there. And then, this is very cool. Sometimes people ask me, is there anything inside of that side stand next to the sofa? And in this case, yeah, there is. There's a potential for some storage. And they're doing that on both sides, which I think is very cool. Now, it's a tall, funny space, but you know, I kind of thought about it. It's actually not a bad place like to slide a laptop out of the way when you're not using it or something like that. Magazines. <laughs> I would say an atlas, but... At this point, I, I, you know, unlike Indiana Jones, I just use my phone for everything. And I'm pretty sure he would have, too, had he uh, had the technology when he was raiding the Temple of Doom. Now, I try to highlight different things in different videos, but this is one in every North Point I love to take the time to point out. That gigantic butcher's block style counter extension cutting board combo job right there. But uh, something else here. It came into the 21 season. You see that mini faucet? That is the Jayco drinking water system. When we get into the uh, the belly of this beast, you'll see that it actually has like what looks like a five gallon Culligan chug. It is a separate dedicated, uh, like basically fresh water system. It does feed the uh, the ice maker and the uh, the the tap on the uh, the refrigerator of the residential refrigerator, which is also very cool. Um, but 
it means that you don't have to lug along a bunch of uh, extra, you know, bottles or anything like that with you. It's just the simplicity factor, you know. You may also notice North Point has changed over into just a big open farm sink, which I thought is very cool. Personally, I really uh, prefer farm sinks quite a bit. A little handy drawer there so that your dish soap comes to you. Oops, there's an extra drawer there that opens that I forgot about. And speaking of the drawers, check this out. I forgot to mention this previously. Those are all residential soft clothes, which I think is very, very cool. Now, as we work our way over here to the upper deck, on the way through, right by the door, we got our little uh, shoe garage, as well as the central vacuum system, and what I like to call the electric dustpan. You just basically, you'll, you'll toe kick, flip this up, uh, when you're plugged into 110 shore power, and uh, like right now I'm on 12 volt only, so this doesn't work. But when you have shore power, park power, that will activate and basically you just sweep everything into there. Because have you ever noticed how a traditional manual dustpan always leaves that last little line of stuff? It's like, I'm only going to help you 99% of the way. The last 1%, deal with it. Now for reference, we're back over here in the theater seat because I want to showcase a couple things I think are very cool. They don't maybe seem impressive on camera, but when you're using the RV every single day, stuff like the fact that every single light in this RV has a dedicated switch. And you'll, you're going to see these little panels all over the place in here. These are little miniature wireless remotes that uh, connect to the J command system, the BM Pro brain center of the RV. Each one of these panels is slightly different. They're going to do different things that they need to do, like sitting in the slide. I don't need a button on this that opens the slide out, actually. I'm glad that it doesn't have one. But if I hear something funny, I've got one button I can turn on all the outside lights and check out, was that a raccoon or was that a murderer? That gas station murder hobo coming to get me. That guy that I wouldn't pick up hitchhiking a few miles back, he tracked me down. He had my license plate and he found me. Well, you don't got to worry about that guy. Uh, you, you know, like you can turn on your dinette lights. What's also cool is you can turn off all your ceiling lights right here. Like straight across from us is the entertainment. Well, when it's movie time, you don't want all the main lights on, but if you need a little light to look around, you can activate the upper and lower accent lights and do some stealth mode trekking through the RV without flipping everything on, which I guess flipping everything on is better than flipping everything off, right? Now, it seems like everybody and their brother has, has really adopted a bathroom like this or very, very similar to it. They all have a couple little touches from, from one another. One thing I want to mention is no matter what uh, decor you have down in the living room, the upper deck, the bedroom and the bathroom will always look the same. Now, uh, you see a true pocket door on the left there, and this is good not just for long-legged people like me. This is a very fluffy, friendly bathroom. If you are just, a, like you got big, broad shoulders, or if you have wider hips or something like that, uh, well... Not every RV fits you very well. This one's going to. And let me know what you think of the change over to that oversized vessel sink. I love the fact that it's like an actual big bowl. You can like, you can actually wash your face in it. And they, they move some things around. They shrunk back the tiny medicine cabinet here, which frankly, you could barely even put a toothbrush in previously. And they put just a, a backlit mirror on the wall, which of, of course, I'm sorry, I didn't activate the backlit switch. There you go. Kind of like in the living room. If you want to just run off accent lights, it does a heck of a job in here. Now, they uh, they standardized this uh, awesome like walk-in shower over here from the Pinnacle Line over into North Point. And you see that it has some excellent headroom. But one of the other things I really like about it is that it actually has a little shelf in the corner where you can actually put, you know, some bottles of soap. <laughs> and is it me? This always looks like a little person like, hey, buddy. Like, it, it, <laughs> I don't know. To me, it's got some character to it. It looks like a little Pixar guy to me. Then again, if, you're, if you agree, you might need psychiatric evaluation. Regardless, we also have that 300-pound rated teak seat right over there where, uh, you know, you want to flip it up out of the way. You can't. There I go talk about flipping things up and on and off again. I'm going to get in trouble one of these days. And something I really love in here, they angled that TV downward. So at night, you know, when you're kind of leaning up against your pillow, I don't know about you, at the end of the night, uh, my wife and I, we always just kind of catch up on like a half hour, 45 minutes of whatever series that we're watching, you know, and uh, we'll stuff two pillows behind us. And then when we go to sleep, we'll peel the other pillow off as it were. But that TV angled down, it's just nice that you don't have to kind of crank your neck around so much. Now, taking a look at all of the storage in here, uh, you'll notice that the top of that dresser actually flips open, which is kind of cool. Neat little kind of personal valuables storage space in there. 
Uh, not to mention the fact that you also have that stackable washer dryer potential in this one. And then down below here, you can see that there's full storage uh, below that king bed space. Now, when you go with the king bed, it's a little tight against the wall. But my parents are uh, like North Point Pinnacle, Montana people. So I asked them about that and they said, well, Josh, I spend about three minutes making the bed. I spend about eight hours sleeping in it. I'd rather have a bigger place to sleep. Fair enough. That is from, you know, actual owners. Now, I, there's definitely not one rule there. You can option a queen into this if you want. And I love that newer, bigger, deeper bed slide. That the large windows in there help make the room feel big. Not to mention, all of the uh, the mirrors on this awesome front closet here just look tremendous. But what you don't realize is how much floor space you get because of that new expanded bed uh, slide right there. This is a bedroom you can actually, like get dressed in, which is very, very cool. And remember, you've got the quieter air conditioner here. You actually have not just prep, but the the LTE, like Wi-Fi extender signal access point in here. And if you're kind of curious, like what kind of headroom do you have in here? You've seen pictures of me on the toilet, in the shower. Two pictures of me in the shower, actually, now. Unless you've watched other videos, then you've seen countless, I don't know. I'm like the toilet selfie champion at this point. But, um, I'm about 6'3", for reference, and you see that even without the vault of the ceiling, I can stand over here all the way against the sidewall. But over here, where you're walking, it's just better. Now, for travel and road mode access, I just always like to really quick showcase the fact that you can open the door and get to the bedroom with the bed slide closed. Um, that's normal. Most fifth wheels can do that. But I have bumped into a couple every now and then now with the slides closed, especially if you like upgrade to a larger bed or something like that, uh, you basically lose out on everything. Now, just obviously we can get to the uh, the bathroom as we twist around here. Downstairs though, it actually surprised me. Uh, as, as aggressive as the big slides on the island were, I thought we were gonna get cut off when we came down here, but very similar to the 377 mid bunk North Point, which basically shares the exact same lower deck. It has the exact same you can squeeze through the slide travel accessibility. Now, depending on which refrigerator and freezer combination you get, you'll have more or less traveling access. The uh, two-way gas electric fridge freezer that we're looking at right here, it does offer better traveling access, but it's also a little bit smaller and not as aggressive of a cooling unit. So which fridge is better for you is really going to depend, I think, a little bit on how you camp, where you camp, how often, how much are you moving, little factors like that. Those are the things we like to get to know when we get to meet you at Halid RV so we can help match you up with your second camper the first time. And the new exterior on these, woo! I don't know how else to say it, other than it looks like this RV was plucked out of the future. Uh, it, it's like the Jayco luxury fifth wheel designers living in the year 3021. I don't know. It looks pretty darn amazing to me. I got a ton to cover. I'm just going to start right up front, start cranking my way around on here. Like the largest front storage compartment available in this class, there is a, uh, there is a generator prep package and factory generator option. What's cool is whether you get just the prep or the full on generator, you get double the propane because you swap out from a pair of 30 pound bottles to three 40 pound bottles and that little small door to the right of the baggage door that's wide open right now that is actually just basically prep for an uh the the third propane bottle if you want to add a third bottle even if you don't hook it up it's nice to just have it there now down here in the pass-through compartment it's drop frame so it's nice and large that is the bottle that feeds the drinking water system and again if you get the residential refrigerator that also feeds the water dispenser and ice maker so you always got clean ice i'm going to crawl right down here give you a look at the underside of the the bed and bath deck which i don't normally do in a lot of rvs because there's nothing really exciting to show on this one though you see the double-sided astrofoil that is one of like eight different areas in this rv where you have that layering and not just in the belly but also obviously the bed bath deck under the the uh, well above the pin box up the nose across the roof and in the flooring of every slide of every Jayco, you get a layer of that radiant barrier stuff. And that is true all the way down to a J-Flight SLX basic little bunkhouse camper. That's pretty cool. Over here, you might have noticed a couple of these inside and gone, so what is that thing right there? It's a thermistor. It's a temperature sensor. This, uh, the, the, the J-Command system will actually uh, be able to tell you 
like what's the temperature outside versus inside and things like that. And if you do have it like, uh, you know, synced up to the internet, you can effectively almost like remote start your RV. So like, let's say that you have this at a park and uh, you, you visit seasonally or you visit for weekends or something like that. How cool is this? You can basically like activate your RV's uh, air conditioner system and stuff like that before you even get there. As long as you have it hooked up to the, uh, like say park Wi-Fi or something, which remember this has that like Wi-Fi LTE adapter built right into it to make that even easier. Double power awnings, all the windows on the door side. And it's not one giant window on that side, but buddy, it almost has the look of it, doesn't it? I am infatuated with the, what they did right there. Sometimes it's funny, just a little color band, whoo, it makes, it makes a difference. Now, um, the RV has the ability to option on a, uh, a Blackstone griddle, which is what would be installed over here in the J port. This is basically a side receiver hitch. And in case you're kind of curious how much weight that can hold, look at the left-hand side of your screen right now. That is two grown men standing on that Blackstone griddle platform. It's no joke. So it's good for more than just griddling. Uh, it's also, uh, if you, like, there's little miniature, they're not miniature, but there's like hammock setups. <laughs> the the famous bumper dumper and if you're noticing with the new for 22 full factory towing hitch on the back here not just uh an accessory hitch but a 3,000 pound towing hitch with safety chain hooks and four-way wiring harness you are double bumper dumper capable so you know it's it's not a bath and a half like the uh like the front bathroom north point but you could always tell somebody to take it outside. I'm sure your neighbors would love that. <laughs> Actually, you know, now that I think about it, if you prefer camping, uh, not being uh, too close to the neighbors, using a bumper dumper a time or two is probably a pretty surefire way to get rid of them. <laughs> that almost sounds like one of those stupid, like too good to be true Facebook ads, you know, campground owners hate him. See how he gets rid of his neighbors in one easy step. Yeah, the double bumper dumper, that'll do it. <laughs> now you may have noticed the Moride pin box on the front of the RV, but as we get down here, you see the matching Moride uh, suspension shackle taking a lot of the shock and jolt out of your towing experience. That also has uh, greasable wet bolt fasteners. We're riding on Dexter axles. There is bronze bushings in there. Then you combine that with the uh, Goodyear Endurance Beast series, which is an extra large series of Goodyear Endurance radials. And then factor in the fact that you now have standard TPMS. We have the JSmart turn signal safety lighting system. We have rear and side camera prep. There is more focus on uh, towing safety here than almost any other fifth wheel I've seen even in luxury fifth wheel segments. Uh, the wind is just kind of holding this shut for me, so apologies. Normally I wouldn't be opening things on camera. I don't know why, it always annoys me. Maybe it doesn't matter. But just to look at the uh, enclosed docking center and uh, using the force. Well, you know what? That would have to not quite latch on me, which is actually kind of cool because that means that it's a really aggressive latch that can't be uh, easily overworked. Six point hydraulic auto leveling on these, which is something North Points didn't used to have until only a couple years ago. Your big Jayco fifth wheels were uh, using electric systems, which is fine. They work in the cold, but basically what Jayco did is I think it's effectively like Dexter brake fluid. They're using it instead of conventional hydraulic fluid in the system because it doesn't freeze up. It's, it was a simple but genius addition uh, to these products. And how about just that just, just stunning three-dimensional high contrast look on these. Wow. Now, as you can see from my shirt flapping in the breeze, it's an awful windy day. I'm all mic'd up, so hopefully it's not eating the camera up too darn bad. Couple quick notes. I want to point out that you're walking on plywood up here instead of OSB. OSB can be a perfectly fine roof material. I think given the choice though, you ask almost anybody, would you rather have it made out of plywood or OSB? You're gonna make it rain on plywood just about every time. Jayco's one of the only ones that does that. Not exclusively, but one of the only ones. Now something else I wanna point out, the sun's really giving me a good way to show it. You see this vertical line over here by the side? What we are looking at right there is there's actually uh, an extra extrusion helping shield uh, the, the, the roof to sidewall transition so you don't end up with sharp points potentially working into the, uh, the roof membrane. 
Um, now, it, it can sometimes form a little channel like that. Uh, occasionally, you'll have a little bit more debris buildup right there. But they're adding extra strength and integrity and protection in one of the most critical areas of the RV. Also remember, double vaulted ceiling. The trusses are both vaulted inside and outside, which gives us some of the best load handling and, and weight uh, capacity of almost any fifth wheel out there. I'll, I'll put Jayco's uh, roof system against anybody, anybody. And just in case you're curious, we are roof solar ready. Uh, and Jayco does have a couple different factory solar packages available. And like over here, the bathroom vent fan, notice how it has the little ears that stick up. So if you want to add a roof vent cover on that, uh, just like you can up there in the bathroom, you can do so without actually modifying any construction and screwing up any warranty aspects. And it's my personal belief, looking at this thing back there, if a transformer was going to take the shape of a fifth wheel, I think this is what it would look like. If I if I was a transformer, I think this is this is what I would choose to look like. That is a beautiful, beautiful rig right there. What I love about it, it's big enough. If you want to spend a long time in one place, you're good. Uh, you've got the room to do it. You've got the storage. It's just small enough, though, that getting it around isn't the biggest, scariest thing in the world. And I don't know what the magic thing is about it, but fifth wheels this size with this layout, when you turn, the tires on the RV almost perfectly follow right in your vehicle's tire tracks. So you don't necessarily have to make those big, wide turns like you do at a lot of other things. You know, like a, 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 the, the, the 382 Flurb, the front living North Point, beautiful, beautiful. One of my personal favorite rigs. It's a lot to haul around. I'd love to have one just somewhere and park it. But if I was gonna be moving and grooving, this is the way I'd go right here with something that size. For more insights like that, or if you just want to check pricing and availability, take a look at the link in the video description. Uh, give our team a call when you're ready. And remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees at Halet RV. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.